Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel. Today I'm going to start off this video with a question. Are you generally a fan of things that make you ask yourself, what the heck did I just see? Well, if you are a fan of movies like Memento or anime like Angel Egg, get ready for the review of The Long Reach. The Long Reach can probably be classified best as a point-and-click horror survival. These genre elements pack neatly into the classic outbreak scenario, with our main character and protagonist being just about as bewildered as the player, having exactly zero idea what's going on. This sense of confusion is also somewhat aided by the story's layout. Initially, as we start the game, we take control of the character Calvin. Our main character Calvin has merely gone to the store to run some errands, and is confronted head-on with the insanity of the outbreak story. However, immediately following Calvin's grisly demise, we then take control of a new main character named Stuart. And it's Stuart, who's basically a temp worker at a technology agency, that we follow through most of the rest of the gameplay. This technology agency, at the risk of giving away too much of the overall story, was experimenting with some sort of reality and mind-sharing technology. And of course, considering that you already know it's an outbreak scenario, something has gone wrong. This setup in and of itself provides an excellent foundation for all of the horror and psychological thrill elements of the game. Though as you do scour each area in the relatively small map, you will be thrown into confrontation settings, which do have a pretty solid jump scare from time to time. Peering around murky corners and trying to find the next puzzle element will always have your attention wrapped up, leaving you vulnerable to those jump scares. However, as with several other budget indie point-and-click titles that have been released recently, many of the puzzle elements in The Long Reach are actually themselves scripted, meaning that only after certain cue points have been encountered do certain items become available to the player. This inevitably requires the player to scour each area time and time again every single time an event has occurred. And additionally, as diehard or devoted fans of the point-and-click genre do generally have some level of intelligence, their intuition will often lead them to pursue areas and items that aren't yet available. This will generally lead the average player to hammer fist their way through each puzzle, trying to force their way through every item in their inventory at an action point, and inevitably walk through every single room in attempts to find some new item that has only now been made available. But again, as this is a relatively small map, even that potentially frustrating point of gameplay doesn't really impact the game's progression. Though it does make it pretty easy for an intelligent gamer to get ahead of the developer. The overall story, intrigue, and just freaky elements of the game are pretty high, and I'd have to say that a lot of the scare and just uniqueness and weirdness of the game is really satisfying. However, one of the small fallback areas of the game where it just doesn't seem to maintain that level of excellence is within the main character's dialogue. As a horror survival game is based off horror and fear, and its main gameplay dynamic is either running away or hiding from things that are trying to kill you, we expect that fear to be the driving force in the main character. However, in nearly every dialogue interaction within the game, the main character is able to use witty, sarcastic, or even aggressive conversation. But this only works to build our character as a persona who is not afraid and doesn't really take anything off anyone, and does a lot to contradict the actual game scenario. However, if you choose to take this somewhat contradictory character interaction as a horror parody, or maybe that he's at the edge of a psychotic break and has no other choice but to be aggressive, you as the player can make it work. Additionally, the gameplay is set up into about three fundamental scenarios. Pre-event, during-event, and post-event. And this is probably the only reason I would have brought up the movie Memento in the beginning of the review. Disjointed timelines, taking control of different characters, working the same dialogue from different characters' perspectives, all works very, very well, but the thing it works very well to do is to disjoint and confuse the player. Playing the game and running through dialogue scenarios from different perspectives could potentially have the effect of expanding the player's awareness, but in the case of The Long Reach, it really just works to confuse the player as to what their motivations really are. But despite all of this, the visuals and game context and content are really well developed. And I'd have to say that as a unique experience, it was something that I definitely don't regret, but it's definitely not something I would have stood in line for. All in all, though, if I could leave you with a final thought, The Long Reach is definitely not a bad game. It is a somewhat somewhat disjointed point and click with a somewhat contradictory scenario and main character. But it is interesting, it is unique, and it will have you at a couple of those freakout moments. So it may be worth the five or six dollars it costs now that it's on sale for a few hours of entertainment. But that is again only if you're the type of player who upon finishing a game really enjoys questioning their own sanity. Well that about wraps up the review of The Long Reach on the Switch eShop. So if you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, feel free to throw me a comment or a like to show your support. And don't forget to click the little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out almost every day, so there's always going to be something new to find right here. And if you want to help me create these reviews or support the channel, feel free to check out our Patreon page. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamer, so as always, thanks for watching.